one of the biggest updates in Live 9.5 is simpler, which has had a makeover and some very cool new features added in. Although it looks very different, it still works in exactly the same way as before, in its default state. For example, dragging in a drum hit, you can hear that it works as before, whereby a higher pitched MIDI note makes the sample play at a faster rate, making its pitch higher and length shorter. And vice versa when a lower note is played. Below the display, you can see the filter, LFO and envelope controls, although these dials are fixed to the amp envelope, so always control the level. And now the filter envelope is accessed via a second page, where we've got a graphical display, which can be dragged to shape the sound. And the envelope activated by clicking on the switch, turning up the amount, and then setting the curve how you want. And there's now a load of really amazing sounding filter types added to the instrument, as well as others in Live's collection and the auto filter effect itself, which we'll come on to shortly. Also on this tab, we've got a display for the LFO controls and waveform, and one at the end for setting the amp envelope there instead. And this can be switched to showing the pitch envelope, where you can then alter the pitch of the sample on the display too. So mostly so far, you can see the controls from the old Simpler have just been improved and made graphical. So working with the instrument is a nicer and easier experience. Back on the sample tab now though, this is where the majority of the new features are. First up, all the waveform displays throughout Live have been improved, so you get a nicer visual representation of the audio. If I drag in a different sample now, like a stereo one, then you can see with this one, zooming in shows us both the left and right channels of the stereo signal. Also, with it being a longer sample, we now get another one of the new features activating, and that's warp mode here, which is a fantastic new addition, although one that's bound to confuse at first. Of course, if I want Simpler to work exactly as before, I can just turn off warp and have the sample speed up and slow down with the pitch of MIDI notes as before. However, keeping it on means we get all the controls from the audio clip editor within the instrument. So we could choose a suitable warping mode, after which MIDI notes then change the pitch, but not the length, which always stays the same. Incidentally, choosing repitch means MIDI notes don't even change the pitch, although they are modulating the filter right now, which you could have some fun with. But of course, project tempo affects the pitch, as with audio clips. This warping is particularly useful though when you use a loop, so I'm dragging in a simple bass loop from Ian Bland's Loop Masters pack, and you can see on the display that it's a 4 bar loop with a repeating phrase that doesn't transpose in pitch. But now, as it's warped, when I play a different MIDI note, it changes the pitch, but stays locked to the project tempo, so won't go out of time. One thing that's particularly cool with this though, if I reduce the polyphony to one voice, so it's monophonic, and then turn on glide and have the time relatively high, then when I play overlapping notes, it doesn't re-trigger the sample, but just shifts the pitch up and down so I could create my own transposing bass line by playing different notes now. Or if I wanted to simplify it and create something a bit sillier, I could reduce the sample to one bar long and then play alternating C's an octave apart to create a very slidey bass line. Playing with the glide time really changes the character of the bass. And playing this vocal sample now with Simpler, you'll hear the massive benefits of this new warping feature, where if I now have more than one voice, so it's polyphonic, and then play different notes together, I can create different harmonies with the vocal. If 
I drag another sample from Blandy's pack in now, making it a percussion loop this time. And as we're in monophonic mode now, with just one voice, and have some glide added in the pitch section, you can hear I can play different MIDI notes and then make the pitch of the sync loop slide around again, which is a cool effect. But let's check out the other sample modes with this one. So if I move to the left of the waveform display, you can see there are two additional mode buttons, with one simply activating one shot mode, which means the sample will just play through from start to finish, which was obviously possible with version 1, but needed you to make a few extra tweaks. So now you can just hit the button to make that happen, after which you just press a key and the sample plays straight through at whatever pitch you play. Also here, there's a gate option instead of trigger, which is another instant envelope setting, which means the sample only sounds whilst you hold down a note, and stops immediately when you let go. This is handy in the next mode we're about to look at too. If you're getting any clicks whilst playing with this by the way, you can increase the fade out dial at the bottom to get rid of those. Switching to the final mode now though, which is slice, then you'll see this is basically like slice to MIDI, only done right here in Simpler. So I can now play notes from C1 upwards to play all these individual slices in the sample. It slices up the sample by its transients according to the sensitivity amount here, which you could bring down to reduce the number of slices. And you can access different options for the slices in the context menu on the display, where there's sample normalizing, cropping to the start and end markers, reversing, and some different conversion options, but this mode really comes into its element on push, so I'll switch over to that now. With push, if I have a drum loop on an audio track like I do here, I just need to press the convert button and then choose simpler to load the drum loop into the instrument. Then if I switch to slicing mode, you get all of the slices ascending on the pads here. And I can bring down the number of slices by adjusting the sensitivity. And change from trigger to gate to play a snappier groove. One cool thing here though is the ability to create your own slices with the pads, which is done by turning sensitivity right down and then turning on pad slicing. Then if I set it back to trigger mode and hit the first pad, I can then hit subsequent pads as it plays to create new slices. And the start points of any slices can be edited afterwards using the nudge dial on the screen, as well as any removed by holding delete and hitting a pad. So it's a really cool and hands-on way of slicing up samples. And now if I filter this drum break, you can hear how great the new analog model filters made in collaboration with Cytomic sound. There are now four extra types in addition to Live's default one, which is the clean one here. Let's check out the state variable one with some extra drive. So you can get a really fat and warm sound with these. Of course, the samples can be played like this, but another option is to convert them to a drum rack by hitting convert once again, which then offers all the additional mixing options you get with a rack. And with all the samples getting imported into their own simplers in the rack, it maintains all the instrument settings like filters when doing this. So that was all of the main updates to Simpler in Live 9.5. I hope you enjoy them. See you next time.